you know, a lot of pieces of Lost Wrestling Media have a curiosity factor that makes you really want to see them. Because, you know, we're all children deep down really and, and being told we can't have something only just, you know, it just makes us want it a little bit more. And so we rage cry ourselves to sleep while telling our parents that we hate them and that they should just go away and that we can't wait to leave this stinking house and just leave me alone! <laughs> As I was saying, a lot of this lost wrestling media makes me really desperate to get my peepers on them. Some of this footage, however, I don't think I or anyone else should ever see. When a wrestler gets hurt or worse during a performance that's gone wrong, it's never something you want to witness or relive. And we can all be thankful that on some of these occasions, camera phones weren't yet invented and those in charge decided to withhold the fateful moment from public consumption. One such occasion was the career-ending injury suffered by Darren Drozdov while wrestling at a WWE television taping on October 5th, 1999. A promising career was tragically cut short and a young man almost lost his life. But what exactly happened on that night? What went wrong? And why will WWE never, under any circumstances, make it available? Given that the incident happened 20 odd years ago and that he never won a championship during his short time in WWE, it's perhaps not too terribly shocking that many of you watching this have no idea who Darren Drozdov is. Droz was a former professional football player who played for three seasons in the NFL for the New York Jets, Philadelphia Eagles and Denver Broncos. By all accounts, he was a decent player and a hell of an athlete but it was actually some on-field antics not related to playing the game that really caught the public's attention. During a televised game of Monday Night Football, Drozdov vomited on the ball before the centre could snap it, earning him a measure of notoriety. It was, um, you know, a special talent that he had, being able to regurgitate on command, something that would be incorporated into his wrestling persona later on down the line. Droz's NFL career was cut short, like so many, due to a knee injury. As many a gridiron warrior had done before, Droz traded in his helmet for tights and boots and attempted to make it as a wrestler, starting in 1997. He worked for Paul Heyman's ECW, wrestling the likes of Taz and Al Snow, as well as on the independents too. It didn't take WWE, then riding a huge wave of momentum as the Attitude Era really began to kick off, very long to notice Draws, who, while undoubtedly green, clearly had a lot of potential. And, you know, the ability to puke on command. That part is very important. Probably more than the charisma or the physique or anything like that. As seen in the excellent documentary Beyond the Mat, Droz was called in to meet with WWE Chairman Vince McMahon, who proceeded to commentate on Droz's attempts to puke, which, uh, incidentally, would be his new ring name, Puke. Welcome to the big time, kid. Yeah. Puke quickly would change to Darren Drozdov, and then simply Droz. After doing the requisite dark matches, he had a busy few months on television, being introduced as an associate and then fully-fledged member of the Legion of Doom, he also played a significant role in the abhorrent hoax fight in his personal demon storyline. He even participated in the infamous Brawl for All, drawing with Hawk, who had to withdraw due to injury in the first round, beating Savio Vega on points in the quarters, and then losing to Bradshaw in the semi-finals. Once the LOD storyline and team had run its course, Droz floundered for a while as they attempted to figure out how to repackage him. He eventually started to team with fellow pierced oddball Prince Albert, and the two found moderate success as a mid-card act. They were hardly serious tag team title contenders or anything, but they were in storylines and consistently on television, and that allowed them to get over at a time when WWE was red hot. Given time, who knows what the team could have morphed into? Sadly, just as things were going well for Draws, tragedy struck.
On October 5th, 1999, WWE were taping not only SmackDown, but also an episode of Sunday Night Heat. One of the matches for the evening was Draws taking on D'Lo Brown for the European Championship in a dark match before Heat was taped. During the bout, the respected, experienced, and by all accounts, very safe D'Lo went to hit Draws with his trademark running powerbomb. It was a move they had done together many times before, each one of them going according to plan, including on television. On this night, however, something was different. Both have said since that it was a case of bad timing and draws wearing a new loose t-shirt for the match. D'Lo couldn't get a proper grip while executing the move, Draws couldn't get to do a full jump at the right moment, and this resulted with him landing on his head and neck. It was an accident, but a costly one. Draws fractured two vertebrae in his neck and was immediately rushed to the Nassau County Medical Center, where he underwent a long and complicated surgery. While the hope backstage was that he simply had a stinger, a wrestling term for something that can cause the sensation of paralysis but usually ends up being much less severe, it was unfortunately much, much worse. Draws was left quadriplegic from it, essentially losing feeling from the neck down, though he did later regain some in his arms and upper body. While photos exist of the pre and post match scenes, as well as one shot of the move itself just before Draws makes contact with the mat, the video footage has never been seen. There is a brief two second snippet of Draws being carried out of the ring on a stretcher, though we don't see exactly who it is, on the old don't try this at home video warning WWE used to air, right as the narrator says that careers have been ended in an instant. Droz's career was ended in an instant, and all things considered, he was lucky he didn't lose his life. We're talking millimeters here. The tape of the powerbomb gone wrong now sits in the WWE vault with instructions to never copy, view, or destroy it. It's one of only two pieces of footage that come with said instructions, the other being Owen Hart's fatal fall from the catwalk at Over the Edge 1999. Life after the injury would never be the same for Draws or D'Lo Brown. Naturally, the former European and Intercontinental Champion was left distraught, though Draws made an effort as he was being taken to the hospital immediately following the incident to tell D'Lo that it was an accident and that he shouldn't blame himself. Still, it was a heavy burden for the professional to carry, and he almost quit the business entirely before being talked out of it by friend and talent relations exec, Jim Ross. Brown maintained contact with Draws, and the two spoke about the accident together. And Draws has been steadfast in his refusal to play the blame game, acknowledging that it was an accident that could have happened to anyone, and that he and everyone else knows the risks when it comes to athletics. Draws continued to work for WWE after the accident, contributing content as a columnist for magazines and the web, including pay-per-view predictions. He continues to be cared for by his family and supported by WWE, and has also shown up as a talking head for shows like Dark Side of the Ring. His story remains a stark reminder of the risks that professional wrestlers take every single time they step into the squared circle.